I shoot mostly in manual mode, and that's how I prefer to teach. I'll talk to you guys as well. I'll tell you a little bit about shooting in aperture mode and things that you can do to kind of get the same technique if you're still kind of shy about about getting out of that, but I did want to make sure that we're all on the same page in terms of what we're talking about. So um, in terms of controlling your settings on manual mode, all that really means is I'm setting the ISO, the aperture, and the shutter until I get the spot meter in the middle, and I'll show you a picture of the meter that I mean. And some of the tricks that I've done, and I, I mean, sometimes I do it and sometimes I don't, but is outside, if you set your aperture and your ISO the same, if you know you're going to be at 2.8, for the whole day and that's where you want to be and you want your shutter speed to be, or sorry, your ISO to be at 100, well then uh, only adjust your shutter speed. And it's kind of like a nice easy way to just only keep track of one thing. And inside, I tend to only adjust the ISO. I kind of know that I want to have my shutter speed at a certain, um, certain ith of a second and so that's what I do. So when you shoot a white piece of paper, and we shot this out in the field and it will be part of the video, um, Basically, we, I shot an, a white piece of paper, solid white. It turned at 18% gray on aperture priority. And then I shot the back of my camera bag. It took a blurry picture. <laughs> and it also turned at 18% gray. And you'll see the difference. Um, this one is a thousandth of a second, exactly the same light. I had the model just hold it up in the same shade of light. And then she held my camera bag up, and this is a 30th of a second with everything else being the same. Well, then I realized that the ground and my um, scarf that I was wearing were 18% gray. And you can kind of go out in the field, and there's lots of things that have the value of 18% gray. So you can easily just kind of, the inside of your camera bag usually is 18% gray. Do, does anybody have a camera bag with 18% gray on the inside? Anyway, it's something that you can, <laughs> you can do. Green grass is 18% gray as well. So it's nice if you want to do some metering that way. So I found that when I metered both my scarf and the ground in the shadow, I was getting the exact same result minus just one f-stop. Pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look into the shadows. Kelsey's face is in shadow. And she's also cast a shadow onto something that's 18% gray. And something really interesting is when you're out in uh, the field or in a garden, is that green grass and most leaves are 18% gray. And that's actually the camera um, wizards, when they made our cameras, they actually did that on purpose. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to figure out what my exposure is. And um, I'm using manual mode now. And. I'm going to try to be at like 250th of a second and 3.5. And that's what it told me that my exposure should be. So I'm going to take a picture in the shadow just to show you. And I'll come back up. And now I should have a perfect exposure of Kelsey in the exact same light. And I do. And it looks great. So what I did was, uh, I don't know if you can see or not, but I'm casting a bit of a shadow. right? And if my my model basically had the sun directly behind her, you know, your worst nightmare. And I find when I'm at weddings, this is how I like to pose groups if I have no other options, if I can't put them in the shade. And I always have like uncles and aunts tapping me, but they're in the bright sun. And like my camera, they're going all black. Like, are you sure you, do, you know what you're doing? <laughs> so what I, what I do is I basically fill the frame with my camera uh, in my own shadow, so I'm not like coming up to people's faces and being all <laughs> intrusive. And I just find it, try to find something that's kind of 18% gray. Um, you can also get your model to hold the 18% gray card too in the same light. I mean, that's an easy way to do it too. But uh, I fill the frame and I figure out my exposure and then I come back up, I know what my exposure is, and then I just leave it. So that's if I'm shooting on manual mode. So this was a shot that I did basically where I metered the ground right here, and that was the shadow, like she had cast a shadow onto the ground, and I metered it, and then uh, that was the picture that I got of the model. And then one of the things I also wanted to mention is, my friend told me this great trick, and that is to wear white when you're out on a shoot. And not like a whole white dress <laughs> if you're at a wedding because the bride will kill you, but a white top means you can project uh, yourself like a reflector 
onto your subject. And I shoot alone all the time, so I don't have a, an assistant. I rarely have a second shooter with me. And that way you can project and also add some catch lights. Do you see the catch lights in her eyes there? And that was kind of being picked up from me reflecting the sun back onto her. So it's kind of another neat trick you can do. So green grass, the inside of your camera bag, some sidewalks, and your clothing. I have a gray scarf that I like to wear, and that gray scarf is 18% gray. I like to shoot on spot metering for when I'm doing my manual exposures, just easier. The middle one is called center-weighted metering, and I don't ever really bother with that because it's... Uh, and then I find um, most of the people I know who shoot in aperture or shutter priority mode, any of the priority modes, if you leave it in um, matrix metering, you'll probably have a little bit better results. The matrix meet metering means it's going to meter the whole scene and average it out. So if you're trying to over or underexpose, um, using like, let's say, that underexpose dial, I would only suggest you do this if you're an aperture shutter priority shooter. This is not for people who shoot manual mode. I just thought I'd speak to the fact that you can actually underexpose by a stop or two or overexpose by a stop or two. So uh, a rule of thumb, and this is especially important, I do have, I have worked with um, one girl this year who was an aperture priority shooter, and I found that because we were working inside, I just thought, you know, it would be fine and not a big deal, but a lot of her shots were blurry. And she had a vibration reduction camera, and, you know, that's all totally cool, but, uh, but what we realized is that people move a lot faster than a 30th of a second. So if your shutter is going to adjust down to a 30th, you really need to crank that ISO up until you are at least at the millimeter distance of your lens. So if, and, and no less than a 60th of a second. So if you're shooting at 17 millimeters, never shoot under a 60th of a second. Then anything above 60 millimeters, like 85 millimeters, shoot at 85th of a second or higher. And usually I try to be at least 125th of a second because I have Diet Coke and it makes me shake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, so people move faster than you think. I also just wanted to mention as well that I, I do sometimes work, and usually where I have the biggest trouble is not really with people who are very dark, but with people who are really, really light. You know, the kind of translucent, light um, skin, it kind of, uh, I don't see anybody in this room that has it, but some people will actually, they're a reflector. <laughs> and they, you know, their skin just doesn't absorb any light at all. And that's where you really want to make sure somebody that pale, that you're underexposing a little bit, uh, even from what your meter reading would be with an 18% gray card. Um, somebody who's Asian, tan, Mediterranean, Middle Eastern, usually they're a perfect 18% gray, <laughs> which is really nice for metering. And only people who are extremely, extremely dark, like really African dark, that's where you might want to consider overexposing by about one stop. Now, where uh, this gets a little bit tricky is that our cameras can only read five stops at a time. We're so lucky in digital that if we shoot raw, we can recover a lot of stuff in the highlights and recover a lot of stuff in the shadows. But you still want to have the consideration if you've got a couple like these guys, where she, we're on the scale, <laughs> they were just a little bit, I actually tested the tones <laughs> of the two of them for this, this uh, slide. Uh, so she was very dark. He was pretty pale. He wasn't like translucent pale, but, you know, he was pretty pale. And really what I did was I exposed for him. So I made sure that, that he wouldn't be blown out. And then I used a little bit of fill flash. And we're going to talk about fill flash in some coming slides. And then this girl was a little bit more of the translucent white that I'm talking about, and I really had to dial it down. And she was a bridesmaid for a large Indian wedding that I just shot this summer. And so basically, I also had to use a little bit of fill flash for that. Now, histograms are something that I think a lot of you guys are probably familiar with. But one of the tricks I like to do when I'm out in really bright, harsh sun, you know, where you, like, you can't see the back of your camera, you can't really tell if you're getting the results you want, is I shoot on histogram mode, so that little histogram will actually show up next to my picture. And I know uh, that there's blown highlights if it reaches the far left, or sorry, far right, <laughs> when you're looking at it, of the histogram. And you see the one down below, the detail in the highlights? That means the highlights, there's still some detail that kind of can you actually see that? Yeah, there's still a little bit of an edge, edge there. So that means that there's still some details in the highlights. And that's mostly what I'm worried about. 
And so here, I, this is one of my test shots that I did for, the, for this class, is I photographed this gorgeous model. And she ha she's a burlesque dancer, and she's about to go to Europe. And she wants to see some of these pictures, and she just got her new feathers and stuff. So we wanted to photograph them. So I, this is an overblown shot. My histogram was the one up at the top. So I kind of took that picture on purpose. And then there's also in some cameras where you get that little glowy thing, and that's telling you where your highlights are. And definitely, since she got these beautiful white feathers, I wanted to make sure that there's details in her highlights. This is straight out of camera. And yeah, she's a total cutie, so. <laughs> okay, the other thing I just wanted to mention, <laughs> maybe I'm the only one who is guilty of it, is I used to love the lens flare and all the creativity and oh, I don't want the lens hood on because it ruins my lens flare. But then you try to take pictures of a family portrait out in the middle of the sun at a golf course at noon in the middle on June 21st and you realize all that flare gets in and it screws with your exposure, it screws with your... Um, focusing and stuff like that. So where are lens hood? <laughs>All right, so the next thing we're going to do with our bright, harsh poo light is we're actually going to take advantage of it and we're going to do some kind of stylized, um, something a little bit more dramatic, a bit more fine art and a bit more fashion. What I want to do is um, it's actually slimming to have your um, body more in the shadows. Um, so I'm going to have Kelsey positioned where her body's going to be in the shadows and then her face is going to actually be up here and find the sun. For my metering, I always have my metering set because I always do manual metering, manual exposures, is on spot meter. So actually, I can come up, I can fill my frame, and find out right on her cheek, metering for the highlights, what it is I want to achieve, because the only thing I care about is where the sunlight's hitting. Everything else that's in shadow is gonna go almost pitch black, and that's how I'm gonna clear a lot of the clutter that's out of the scene, plus to create a little bit of a dramatic image. So I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna meter that right now, that's awesome. I'm just gonna, there we go. Now I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna start shooting. And I'm not gonna care that there's a lot of people in the background. I'm not gonna care about any of the other visual mess because it's all just gonna go to shadow anyway. That's perfect, Kelsey. The other thing I'm doing is I've again lowered my own angle because anything that's now below Kelsey's waist is going to disappear. And because I've, I'm down on stairs and I'm also down physically um, looking up, it's another way to clear out a lot of the visual noise and the visual clutter. I took this picture on Aperture Priority downtown in Victoria on Bastion Square. There are tons of people milling around. You can even see one of them off in the left corner because I didn't delete them out. And on Aperture Priority, I mean, it's a fine exposure, but she is a little bit blown on, on, her, on the bright spot of her face, right? So this is Aperture Priority matrix or uh, evaluative metering and that's what the scene looked like. And then what I did was I came in, and I mean, because she was my model, I, was, I felt comfortable enough to actually go in and zero in on her cheek, fill the frame with her cheek, and figure out what my exposure needed to be to kind of darken it down, and then this was the resulting photograph in black and white. So it's a little bit more dramatic. Uh, for this little girl, I, I followed her around. We're gonna be seeing a lot of this little girl later with some family portraits. So she basically gave me a tour of her house she was 18 months old, and she toured me around the house and stuff. So this is her leading me on the tour. <laughs> and this is in Costa Rica, where it was a bright, sunny day at 2 p.m. <laughs> so I basically metered for her skin. And then this was an accident <laughs> that, I, that I took. I just kept it. I had shot this wedding uh, and had it on my, my computer. And this is what, I ended, what the resulting image was. No, uh, no... <laughs> There's no Photoshop done to this image at all. So, um, so basically what I did was the same technique where I went into the, the dark part of the grass where she was casting a shadow, figured out my exposure, held it there, and you can see the sun is, is blowing out there. And because it was F8, it didn't make little stars. I'm going to show you. So this is the edited image. So I didn't do too much editing. I just kind of brightened the image. I wanted to point out, because I didn't know this when I was going through photography school, but when you shoot at f22, that you can actually count 22 little stars out of the sun. Isn't that neat? And when you shoot at 2.8, it's a blob. <laughs> so sometimes I'm like, damn, I should have shot at a, 
um, a better aperture, you know, when you really want to get that sun star in. So there's one with a sun star, just an engagement portrait shoot that I did. Because I used to wonder, like, why is it like I just would always have inconsistent results? Then here's a picture of a couple that basically I couldn't move them. We were in a cave in Barbados. And this is the same couple where uh, she was dark and he was light. And so basically, we couldn't move the, the inside of the cave. It took us 15 minutes to get to this spot. And it was slippery. And we couldn't like move around. Even I had trouble moving around. So I had really limited options. I took some silhouettes. I took some regular pictures. I took some where the sun was coming in on them. And then I also took some using the same technique where I exposed for their skin so that I could pick up some of the walls of the cave. So just basically overexposing. And yeah, so it's four and two thirds of a stop difference between the two shots. So you know, your the latitude of, of stops. And, and I'm so sorry, I should back up. When I say stop, I wonder if I've got the, I, I've, it's the meter that's in your camera. We, does everybody understand stop? Okay, <laughs> just in case. So my friend Eunice, when we, were, we used to shoot together, and she went out with a second photographer. Eunice put the bride in this light, and the second photographer went, uh, okay, <laughs> shot on aperture priority, and this was the resulting picture. But what Eunice was really taking a picture of was this. And it's so much different, right? And we're going to be playing around a little bit of this with nighttime lighting in a few minutes, or, in, well, 10 minutes or so. So outdoor day to night, uh, I had uh, Keith's girlfriend, Leia, uh, stand outside. And just to show you that basically people were walking around, you can see there are shadows in behind her. And then there's a lot of sun coming in. This was shot on aperture priority. That's what the scene would have done. And then what I was getting was this, almost pitch black, by shooting, uh, how many stops is that different? This is F10. Yeah, so it's like about four stops difference to underexpose and to meter for that really harsh light that you can see coming in on her skin. And I didn't touch these pictures in Photoshop at all. So we're going to get right into shooting in the dark with no flash. And uh, this is something I really love doing. This is so fun. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk about dark places. And we've turned off the light. I know we're in a studio, but really, um, when you just plug in a regular old incandescent light, it's as though we're in anybody's home. Uh, so what I did was, this is, of course, a gorgeous incandescent light, but it's projecting no more than your average home lamp would project. And I've used just regular old lamps for this technique many times. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Kelsey here. And where I'm going to meter, it's the exact same metering technique we did out in the harsh sun when we really kind of underexposed the scene from what you know your average reading would do. I'm going to take a few photos on shutter priority at 125th of a second, and we'll see what it kind of on a, with a wider angle lens. And I'm pretty sure it's going to try to even out and get some detail in the shadows. We don't want the detail in the shadows. We actually want this kind of dreamy, artistic creative, dramatic lighting. And so what I'm going to do is, I'm just kind of guessing on my own cheek, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be the same on Kelsey's. I'm going to use spot metering, and I'm going to meter in and decide what my shutter and my aperture and my ISO needs to be in order to only expose for this. I want this to turn 18% gray and let the shadows just go where they may. So I'm doing aperture priority for the first few pictures, and it's absolutely not the look I'm going for. It's trying to bring details into the shadows, and it's made her face way too bright. So instead, what I really want to do is put my camera on manual mode, not, not manual um, uh, focusing, but manual mode in terms of getting the, the um, aperture and shutter reading. And let's start at 125th of a second, 2.8. And I'm at 4,000 ISO. If I go to, oh, okay, you know what? 125th of a second, 2.8 is a good reading on her cheek. Let's see, no, nope, it's still too dark. So I'm gonna increase it and get right in this light here to know. And I'm actually just following my camera's meter. And I think I better just dial down that ISO a little bit. And 320, 2.8, 
seems to be perfect. So I'm going to back up now. I've got that reading and I did it just by reading right into her cheek and I'm just going to take a picture of her. And she's sitting in that way that, uh, that I told you guys about where you only use one butt cheek. And even if that's the only instruction you tell somebody, it's a great instruction to do. And Kelsey, you're doing awesome. That's gorgeous light on you. Perfect. And the other thing too that I wanted to mention, so Kelsey kind of just look straight out is uh, maybe look down or even kind of maybe toward me is you see all these shadows under her eyes, not so flattering. So what I always try to do is have people lift their face to actually have the light fill in the eye sockets because the eye sockets really take in shadows and it's not really where we want the shadows to lay. We want, we want to emphasize Kelsey's face, so that's perfect. And I always tell people that if they find that the, the light is just simply too bright for them, that they can um, just close their eyes gently like Kelsey's doing right now. That's perfect. That's awesome, perfect. Gorgeous, Kelsey. Okay, so all of these pictures were taken with available light. No flash was used. I spot metered for the brightest spot in, on somebody's face. Same technique. This is taken at a workshop in a hallway in a school. And all it is is a pot light, just like the lights we've got here. A little bit of a brighter pot light. There's some actually uh, going against there. And because the, the wall that I was shooting against to frame it was not lit hot light, it actually went pitch black. So this is straight out of my camera as well. And then this, is, this is, has been edited a little bit, but not, not much. And this is at the Mayfair Mall in Victoria, and those are the pot lights outside. So I did have this on a tripod because I shot it 20th of a second. It was with my old camera, which was a D200 at the time. And this is like my first nighttime shot that I got a result I was really excited about. We're going to be practicing this in a minute. So this is a parkade, and I just wanted to show you kind of the setup scene and then the picture I was actually getting. And the parkade was probably as bright as, it's, as this room is. So it's pretty bright, uh, but if there's like a harsh light kind of hitting a wall, you know, at fine art galleries, those kind of lights, but even in most hotels, elevators, there's always these pot lights or these lights, like the one that's actually on me right now is projecting a lot more light than the rest of the room. This is in a car, and it's the car light that was on in a limo. And this is an elevator. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then this is just out front of somebody's hotel. Um, basically, they were about to walk into their room. I followed them around because we didn't have time in the daytime for portraits. So they weren't drinkers, and I said, hey, can I just follow you around after the, after the wedding and follow you back to your room? <laughs> And they let me. So yeah. So I wanted to show you guys uh, video light in case you haven't used one. How many people here have a video light as part of your like kind of general shooting stuff? They're really awesome. And I and I hope some people brought a few along so that you guys can can practice a little bit. I brought two myself, and then I brought some extra ambient lights. Plus we have some pot lights. But basically, when I don't have when the light's not really cooperating with me, I turn on the same light a videographer would use. And all of a sudden, I can create that light myself, which is really awesome. So I'll show you just a couple of pictures. This was in a car. Uh, and it was taken at 4 in the afternoon in the middle of summer. And because they were in shadow, uh, I, was, I put a yellow gel on my video light, put it on the dashboard. And you can actually see it was a really rainy day, so it was obviously pretty dark. We're in Vancouver. We're in... Stanley Park, which is also a pretty dark park, and we were parked right like, we were parked in a really dark spot, so you could still see a little bit of the outside, but I did underexpose, and I used a video light, and it was as simple as that. So it was way different than the eye would see. And this is just at a, at a reception table. I had the couple kiss, because again, I didn't have a lot of time for portraits after their wedding was over. They gave me about five minutes. <laughs> and then they didn't have time for portraits after, and they wanted to go drink, enjoy their party. So I just said, hey, you know, the party had just started. And I just thought, well, I'll just shoot them at the table. It, was, it had some pretty lighting. And you really want to be able to pick up some of that ambient light as well. And I just put a warm gel on my video light and put it on the table, and it was pretty much as simple as that. This was just another one in Costa Rica where the videographer had a stand 
So we used the videographer's light, which was even more powerful than mine. And it kind of, a lot of people do this with off-camera flash, but you don't need to if it's actually nighttime already or almost nighttime. And it is underexposed a little bit. Thank you.